Apart from what's the good school they gave you, where are you going to talk talk? None is around near. Yeah. Because the people that are there do not understand the vision and thinking of the president. So when they came, they imposed their own. And that was why the NEC and the National Working Committee decided that look, let us bring in youths, women, to come and contest. We gave free nomination for women, free nomination for youths, free nomination for people living with disability. Zabdaki! Zabdaki! Greater Nigeria! So that they can come and run. There is no pulling boot in the internet. There is no pulling boot in the internet. So they should leave the internet and come out, register, take tickets if you are popular, and run. So that when we start having them, in the State House of Assembly, in the House of Rep, gradually, in the next election, some of them would have graduated into going into the Senate. And the reason for doing that was predicated on the fact that there is now no too young to run. Whereby, if you are between 25 and 30, unlike before, you can go to the House of Rep now. You can go to the State Assembly. But for you to go to the Senate upward, you must be 35 years. We said, okay, let us start with this young lady. Women. A lot of them came. Most of our candidates were young. But there are some funny ones that came. They just want to be on the ballot. Some have not gone home for long. And you ask them, why is this place? Why is it time now? But those are not the kind of youths that women will make. We are looking for those that are popular. There are, there are people that are popular in their places, but nobody will give them tickets. If such a person is popular and loved by his people, if you give him a ticket, they will vote for him. <coughs> so if you still have such people, although everything has been done like primaries, we still have opportunities, we have windows of replacement, substitution. If that person is strong, Everybody that is a NEC member that is here, chairman, secretary of, party, of our parties in the state, they know what I'm saying. So if we get somebody that is strong, we can substitute him. When we have the substitution window, our target is to win. Our target is to have more representation. <laughs> so that is it. We are not just doing it that we want to sit and occupy seats. And for those of you who are in the leadership in the states, carry everybody along. Expand their membership register. Get more people. Hold meetings. If you are chairman or chair lady or whatever, you should see yourself as a chief servant. Don't see yourself as an emperor that will be dictated. Even the national chairman doesn't dictate. Like, we sit, we discuss everything. Even this thing I'm saying now, they know it. That is what makes the business to go on. The business of politics. <coughs> we must strive, when we leave, to get more people registered in our party. We still have opportunities. For those who have no PVC, for those who have no PVC, please get them, get them to register. Because the only solution to your problem, my problem and that problem, is that small dog pepper, that small cat, babies. You will use it and put out anybody. Yes. That is all you can do. You can't carry on. You can't fight. That is the only thing you have. PVC. Party leaders in the states. Please adopt this method. So if you are in a meeting, you make sure that all the persons in that meeting, whether it's state day school or local government day school or world meeting, are people that will affect and affect positively to the party in the world. From now, henceforth, all meetings are meeting of PVC holders. Don't say your brother is going to get this in. 
Nous le déclarons. On a nos déformations. Le troisième point, no use. The other strategies to election will not be said here. When we hold our next neck, we start having people to be recruited in every ward, every polling unit. That is what we are going to adopt. It is not enough to say we are members of a party. We are doing nothing to enhance its business. We are doing nothing to enhance the votes. I must tell you, you have a very strong leadership in the party. And, and this is not sounding immodest. It is the truth. Ask anybody in any party. When you mention that they they say, ah, even like they respect us. Because we know what you are doing. And you want to replicate this down the ladder. Down the ladder. From the states to the local government and to the world. We encounter some problems along the way. And that is the law that is what they call passing off. Passing off is when someone is benefiting from you as a result of closeness in them or an acronym or whatever words. So somebody may take action to benefit him, thinking that it was you. So we have had some of these problems. And it relates to the name of our party. So NEC met. The Chairman Committee met two with NEC. NEC approved a change of name. <laughs> I'm just explaining the reasons. But that will come for a good when INEC is here. Because anything you are doing like that, INEC must be present. So we are going to adopt a new name. And that new name will help us. I remember some persons who are conservatives and some who are on the progressive side. They are done, this is your party. We want to be with you now, the level is for, is for civil servants. Find something that will accommodate us. Conservatives and progressives. Find something. They will come. This has been wrong, but it didn't strike us for the reason. Is it because your leadership is strong? Yeah. It's not in, in the party leadership today. You have the you have the oldest, most experienced leadership of all the political parties in Nigeria. And that is not agreeable. That is not agreeable. So we are going to adopt that name. So that we can move on with it. We are consulted on it, and I think it's in order. We're going to do that so that we can start flying it. We don't want to share them with anybody. That is how we have failed in the party. I must confess to you, we have done our best. We have tried to maintain the membership, the integrity, and honor of the party. Even when we have no governor, we have nobody paying into the party. But we say, look, this is a commitment we have made. This is a commitment. We must drive it through. Nobody gave you the assignment. People decided, go on with it. And if we have pushed it up to this point, I think we can push it further and succeed as a political party. The National Executive Council of the party met and agreed that our name should be changed from Zenith Labour Party to Zenith Progressives Alliance.
Honorable Ben C. O. Chief Chairman, Senate Labour Party, River State, move a motion that the name of the party should be changed as Director by the National Chairman. Yes. Hi, Honorable C. Father State, I hereby support the motion that the party name should be changed. Those in favor that the party name should be changed from Zenith Labour Party to Zenith Progressives Alliance say aye. aye. Those in favor that the name of the party should be changed from Zenith Labour Party to Zenith Progressive Alliance say aye. aye. of the motion that the name of the party should be changed from Zenith Labour Party to Zenith Progressive Alliance. Say aye. aye. Those against say nay. Thank you. From now, the name of your party shall be Zenith Progressive Alliance.
for not to be known as Zenith Labour Party. They ought to make that clarification. So the election we are conducting right now, we are conducting it in the name of Zenith Labour Party. But we don't want the press to go out there and inform the world that uh, uh, Zenith Progressive Alliance have a, have a presidential candidate when that party is not yet recognized by INEC. We have a delegate from all the states, all the federation. They are here represented. And the reason they are here today is also in compliance with the provision of the law, the electoral and of course, our party constitution, that should the party decide to go by way of indirect primaries, then of course you must have your, your delegate. So here we have all the delegates from all the states. Now I want to ask all the delegates whether they are comfortable and satisfied with your presidential candidates. We now want to put into vote, and the vote will be yes or no. We all delegates here present. Accept Chief Barista Dangwayam MNI OFR as ZLP presidential candidates. Say yes.
when I become president of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, I will unite the people of Nigeria. That will be my first time. I will make sure that this lack of trust, nobody trusts his brother, will take steps to return Nigeria to where it was. We make use of the traditional institutions. We give them the role they are supposed to play. I was a member of the 2014 National Conference. We gave the traditional rulers a status in that agreement. They were supposed, since they are very close to the people, they are supposed to be part and parcel of governance by playing their own roles. We're also going to use the religious leaders. They should not go to preach what they're not supposed to preach. The cardinal issue there is let Nigerians unite. When we are together, development will become easy. Everything government is doing will be easy. It is not when you are fighting. When you don't trust A, you don't trust B, the North doesn't trust the West, the West doesn't trust the East, the East doesn't trust the North. It's part of our problem today in Nigeria. So our leadership will, have, will tackle that. And I can tell you, in the first three months, we'll be able to see Nigerians smiling at each other again. The second thing we are going to do is to send Nigerians back to work. We are not working now. How do we send Nigerians back to work? Let me start with the textile industries. If we are able to return the textile industries back to work, hundreds of thousands of work will be created. Many people will be employed. All the moribund industries, companies, will be deactivated. I want to talk to you about some of these companies that left Nigeria. I think Michele, don't know all of them have gone. We will bring them back. <laughs> if we are not good to host you, we cannot be good to use your products. We shall try as much as possible to create that enabling environment that led them to live. Is it power? Is it other infrastructures? We have to tackle them. Nigerians must get back to work. When you are busy, when you are busy, you have no time for social crisis. You have no time to be a terrorist. You have no time to be a kidnapper. You have no time to do such things because you are busy. Because you are busy. I recall when I started work early, I worked in the bank. And the day I got an appointment letter for Union Bank, I got for Social General Bank. The same day, next week you'll be here again. I decided to take Union Bank. That time you are a graduate. On resumption, you are given a soft loan to buy a car for 3,000, 4,000. 504 without air condition used to be 3,000 plus. With air condition used to be 4,000 plus. Those of you who are young now will say, what is this man talking about? That is the truth. <laughs> My first car, I bought in 1982-83. I bought it for 4,000 and 46 naira. I moved the ladder, the ladder. <laughs> it's a 305. Those days we come back in time with good leadership. With honest leadership. With committed leadership. Now, graduates are paid peanuts. Some don't even have a job at all. Some are driving boats. I entered boats recently. The guy is a graduate of chemical engineering. And he was driving boats. I took him home. 
Even when I got to my destination, I said, leave the meter to be run. I said, this can't be this one. So we need a leader that will address all these issues and get our people back to work. I'm saying, get Nigerians back to work. Look at our refineries. If you go and find out how much we have spent on turnaround maintenance, which they call tax, you'll be mad. Am I talking about them? They gave it to people who have no means to give electricity. These are the problems in our country, and we are not addressing them. <coughs> so you need a leadership that has the guts, that has the pedigree. I recall some of us, we have no baggage. We are accepted and acceptable all over Nigeria, not east, west, and south. If you are honest as a leader, Nigerians are the easiest people to govern. They will know. When, President, when General Muhammad Buhari, on 31st of December 1983, sacked President Sheikh Shagari and came in with Idi Abba. He didn't hold a town hall meeting. He didn't call Pan he didn't call anybody. But within the first three months, Nigeria saw that that general government were there with Idi Abba. They are not joking. Nigerians, they are trusted automatically. That was the leader. But the climax was when some Nigerians were caught for carrying cocaine. Therefore, everybody thought, including myself, that at the point of shooting them, they would be allowed to go. Until the bullet left, and it was shown on television, people saw blood out of them. Nobody knew that that government was serious. Automatically, people started killing in bus stops. If you go to places like Yaba in Lagos, that thing is still working today. Because that time there was a good leadership that lived by example. I'm talking of them, I'm not talking of them. The point I'm trying to make is that Nigerians are not asking for much. Nigerians are not asking for much. They just want power, work, train their children, and health care. That's all. Is that too much to ask for? No. That's all. Nigerians are very competent people if the leadership is honest and sincere. I will offer that sincerity and honesty. <laughs> I will not steal their money. I will not touch your money. That money must be for the development of Nigeria. And when I was talking before, I talked about the uh, 100 million for the nomination fund and discarding it just like that, as if nothing happened. And I ended by saying that was not their heart and money. I am shouting it to high heavens. Not even that the day we risk with 100 million naira. The, the risk with 100 million naira is it's not their money, it's part of the money they got. Who are those? Former governors, ministers, city ministers? They are the people that brought it. And as they ran away and withdrew, the money is gone. And it's nothing to them. Our presidency will ensure that we strengthen EFCC and make sure that whoever is faster than his fingers will pay for it. <laughs> we will not be part and parcel of such things happening. And of course, you know our antecedents. We have been saying so. We have been checked and checked and cross checked. We are committed to the development of this country. We are committed. So the Nigeria needs a government, a leader, 
that we lead by example. We are ready and willing to offer that leadership. We will obey and respect fundamental human rights and freedoms of Nigeria. That is not what is happening today. Human rights is a key subject in international communities. Nigerian rights and freedoms must be respected. Court orders must be obeyed. We have to strengthen the courts so that they can deal with matters expeditiously. We will not allow a situation where it is alleged that judgments are now being purchased which some of us find difficult to believe, we will strengthen the judiciary. We will strengthen the judiciary. Rule of law must be obeyed and respected. We cannot be doing things with fiat. You just get up, you do it as you like. Nothing happens. There are things that happen in Nigeria today. When Nigeria sees us in the lab, they are Niger. It's because the whole thing is collapsing. Nobody is checking. Nobody. What they will say with my emergency this morning, this afternoon, will be, ah, Dan has no experience. He has not been governor. He has not been president. He has not been this. He has not been that. I don't need such experience. I don't need the experience that made me steal Nigeria's money. I don't need the experience that made me feed Nigerian children who are in their parents' house with billions of Nigerians' money. We don't need such experience. Nigeria needs a fresh blood, a committed citizen, somebody who believes in Nigeria, somebody who will drive the process. And Nigerians will see it as being honest. And that is it. We don't need such experiences. The experiences they have acquired over the years is to steal. When they jump from one of it, they use the experience to go and steal again. Nigerians should watch them. We don't need such experience. The experience will not help us. It has never helped us. I'm a manager of human and material resources. If I started to work since 19, in the early 80s, and I've been working since then till now, they don't have such experience. Because we started from the bottom right before we got to where we are. All those years are experiences. The experiences. We cannot continue. Look at the chariot going all over the place. In being a presidential candidate. Chariot. It has become a laughing stock. So what I'm saying in effect, without going into too much details as if we are campaigning. We have not started campaigning. But one thing I want to tell you, Nigerians, is that I will work for you. I will work for you. I will work for you. I will not deceive you. I will not lie to you. I will never lie to Nigerians. You are promoting one. I have never. I have never. And that's why Nigerians believe me when I speak. Because I don't lie to you. I will not lie to you as the president, commander in chief of the armed forces of the federal government. <laughs> in conclusion, Nigerians, you need a fresh hand, fresh blood, with sharp ideas on how to turn things around. This country can be turned around. But we cannot do it with these people. Imagine the other day. If you have been in office for many years, you are not able to do anything. Is it now that you will do it? No. It's not now. You step aside and allow somebody to do something new. Most of them are coming for business as usual. But you don't come for business as usual. During our presidency, after one year, we will not be depending on our oil. <laughs> we will produce and we will be doing a lot in this country. We will do a lot. But Nigeria has uh, become 
uh, has come to a situation whereby every month we come here, take our share, go back and share, wait for another month. We will produce things in this country. By the time you are getting back to work, you are producing. You are creating jobs. So, Nigeria, Nigerians, here I am, send me. Please. 